I'm Colby Jensen. I work for uh, the Idaho National Laboratory. I work in our fuel design and development qualification group. At INL, the, the unique capabilities that we have are the advanced test reactor, the hot fuels examination facility, and the transient reactor test facility, or we call it TREAT. The way that we perform these sorts of tests in these facilities require unique testing devices. So one of these devices we call TWIST, stands for the transient water irradiation system for TREAT. The TWIST device is a fairly complex irradiation test device. Its purpose is to test the performance of nuclear fuels under accident conditions. So the TWIST device is a great example of how we do that and the capabilities that are required to put that together are unique to the, the Idaho National Lab. My name is Clint Anderson. I'm a experiment design engineer at Idaho National Laboratory for the TWIST device. The TWIST device is designed to simulate a loss of coolant accident inside of a nuclear reactor. A loss of coolant accident is where the primary coolant inside of a reactor escapes from the pressure vessel and drains so that the, the reactor fuel is no longer cooled. The twist device features a capsule which is fluidly coupled to an expansion tank and separated by an electrically actuated ball valve. So the experiment design process typically starts with an objective that we want to meet. There's a team of engineers that work on this design from, from a, a hand-drawn sketch as a concept. And then we take the design, we refine it and make computer-aided designs, computer-aided models from this design. Nuclear analysis is completed as well as thermal analysis to make sure that we're meeting our objectives and then the design is refined until we get to the point of, of fabrication. We'll go to, to our fabrication shop to create mock-ups to make sure everything works as intended, do some out of pile or out of reactor testing to make sure that things work properly before we go and do these tests inside of a nuclear reactor. One of the challenges of designing things for nuclear reactors is we want to monitor the, the phenomena that's happening inside of the experiment with, with various instrumentation. So incorporating those instrumentation to the designs can be challenging and at the same time very fulfilling when everything works properly. The twist device is fairly complicated and there are various facilities that are involved with the assembly and fabrication process from fabrication at our machine shops, both internally and externally. Um, it all comes together at the measurement sciences laboratory where the assembly process begins. So here we have the um, twist rea -C experiment for treat. These connectors run all the way down to the fuel specimen. As you can see, the cables run all the way down. We have, this is where the fuel will be in the fuel specimen. So we have the thermocouples. There's gonna be a center line thermocouple, pressure sensors, fiber optic pressure sensors, acoustic sensors. But as you can see, it's pretty intricate on how we have to run these lines up through all of these capsule flanges this flange, this flange, because we have to have a seal for each piece. So we also have uh, future lines. This will be tied to the blowdown valve that will be later installed. So we prepare everything and have all the instruments tied to the experiment up to the point where Connor at Material and Fuels Complex will finish with the fuel rodlet and then the rest of the capsule assembly. My name is Connor Mischlich. I'm a research engineer here at Idaho National Lab, where I build and qualify irradiation experiments for nuclear test reactors. Uh, today, we're going to build a twist rodlet and assemble it into a capsule for a treat irradiation. This is a mock-up of the twist rodlet. Here we have the rodlet body. This is where the fuel segment would be. And on the bottom end, we have our lower end cap with our weep hole. On the top of the rollet is a cone axe where we are able to insert a thermocouple and torque this piece down. That will create a leak tight seal. The fuel pellets going into this experiment are sourced from a commercial manufacturer. Once the fuel pellets arrive here, we qualify them, but we also do a few modifications. One of the modifications is drilling a centerline hole into the fuel pellet. There we'll insert a thermocouple that will be used to gather temperature measurements of inside the fuel during the transients. The twist rodlet is composed of multiple fabricated components, both here at INL machine shops and also sourced to external vendors. No matter where the parts are fabricated, they're brought to a lab in town where they were qualified before being able to be used for our rodlet and capsule assemblies. Once the parts are qualified to be able to be used, they are brought out here where we are able to clean the parts and press them together on our bench top press prior to welding in our laser welder. Our laser welder is housed in an inert 
atmospheric glove box that allows us to reduce some of oxidation on the weld. And the blue laser safe glass allows for viewing during the welds. Fuel pellets and internal components are laid out on a tray prior to being inserted into the fuel rodlet. Once loaded inside the rodlet and the final circumferential weld is performed, there is one final weld which is called the weep hole weld that is as a small hole on the very end of the rodlet that we use our whoops weld under pressure system to be able to determine the composition and the pressure of the gas that goes into the internal of the rodlet. After the final seal weld is complete, the rod will go through a variety of inspections, including leak check, dye penetrant examination, and weld visual examinations to check the integrity of the welds. For assembling the twist capsule, we insert the rodlet into the top half of the capsule, where then weld the thermocouples onto the cladding. Once the thermocouples are attached to the cladding, the two halves of the capsules are set together to be ready to be mated. Once the two halves of the capsule are mated together. You have bolts on the top flange of the capsule that are tightened to create a leak proof seal and a leak check will occur to make sure that nothing is leaking. After that, the shipping cage is secured around it and the heavy equipment operators here at INL will move the capsule up to treat for final assembly qualification before moving into the reactor. I'm Travis Callison. I'm a senior reactor operator at the TREAT reactor. As a reactor operator, senior reactor operator, we're responsible to operate the TREAT reactor to conduct tests on experiments uh, enabling the future of nuclear energy. When we receive the twist capsule in our facility in a shipping frame, once the capsule has been secured and then we fill it with water and then inert the atmosphere inside the capsule to prevent oxidation. Once the capsule is filled, we install a seal plug into the fill port, and then we perform a leak check. Following that initial leak check, we install the twist capsule into our Big Buster containment vessel, which is, serves as a primary containment boundary. Once we install it into the Big Buster, we install fasteners and O-rings, and then perform a, an additional helium leak check. Prior to conducting an experiment campaign with an actual field experiment in the treat reactor. We load a neutron equivalent dummy that we nominally call a NED. We perform core characterization to make sure that the neutronics for the experiment will be correct and that the experiment and the reactor behave as expected. After we remove the NED, we insert the twist capsule into the reactor. We connect our instrumentation and get ready for the transient. After extensive coordination, the accident simulation and treat is executed, and it's all over within a matter of minutes. From there, the experiment will go back to world-class examination facilities to fully diagnose the results of the experiment. From these experiments, the data that's collected is used to support the safe and efficient performance of the next generation light water reactor fuels.